Hello everyone, Namaste. Welcome back to my channel, Academic Tuber. Today we are going to discuss Unit 18, Part 2 from Grade 10 Science, that is Artificial Vegetative Propagation. Before that, if you are new to this channel, please like, subscribe this channel and for more updates, hit the bell icon. If you want more videos related to this, please like and do share these videos among your friends and don't forget to give your valuable response in comment section. Artificial Vegetative Propagation The method of asexual reproduction in which numerous plants are produced from vegetative parts of plants, that is, from root, stem, leaves, is called artificial vegetative propagation. Artificial vegetative propagation is a commercial technique of reproducing plants rapidly by using their vegetative part. It is usually used to reproduce those plants that produce either very few seeds or do not produce viable seeds. It is widely used in agriculture, horticulture and floriculture sector for the quick and large scale production of plants. It provides an opportunity for propagation of best selected varieties of plants. Bananas, pineapples, oranges, grapes, rose, pears, etc. are some of the common examples of plants that are propagated by artificial vegetative propagation. Now we are going to discuss some of the advantages of artificial vegetative propagation. It is cheap, easier and easy method of propagation. Seedless fruits like seedless grapes, seedless oranges, etc. can be produced by this method. Plants like sugarcane, rose, banana, grapes, etc. that do not produce viable seeds are propagated by this method. The fruit trees or flower produced by this method start to bear flower and fruit much earlier than those obtained from seeds. People can grow desirable plants by this method. Now we are going to discuss some of the disadvantages of artificial vegetative propagation. The plants produced by this method are genetically identical to their parents. This restricts their adaptability to changing environment. It hampers the process of evolution as there is no variation. Plants produced by this method are often overcrowded, therefore they lose vigor, immunity and gradually become prone to diseases. Now we are going to discuss some of the methods of artificial vegetative propagation. Layering, grafting and tissue culture are layering, grafting, cutting, tissue culture are widely used artificial vegetative propagation techniques. Here we are going to discuss them one by one. Layering. The process of growing new plants by developing roots on the branches of parent plant is called layering. A layer is the rooted stem following removal from the parent plant. Layering is popular technique in horticulture. This method is commonly applied on lemon, apple, pear, walnut, raspberry, blackberry, mango, guava, plum, etc. to produce a new plant. Types of layering There are five types of layering. Simple layering, compound layering, tip layering, mold layering or stool layering, and ear layering. Here we are going to discuss one by one about the types of layering. First one, simple layering. The process of burying of flexible stem of a plant into the soil to develop roots in it is called simple layering. It is applied in citrus fruits and lemon. So here is a diagram showing uh, the simple layering process. In simple layering, a long flexible stem, more than one year age, is bent down and the stem is buried in the soil about 20 cm away from its tip, as shown in the figure. After 2 to 3 months, the buried portion develops root. Then the plant is separated from the parent plant. Generally, new plants are separated from the parent plant at the end of rainy season and planted in a new place. Second one is compound layering. Here is a diagram showing compound layering. This method produces many new plants from a single flexible stem. In compound layering, the entire flexible stem is buried in the soil, leaving its tip outside the soil. 
The nodes in the stem produces new plantlets within two to three months when watered regularly. Then the plantlets are separated from the parent plant. It is applied in apple, pear, and walnut. Third one is tip layering. The layering in which the tip of plant is bent and buried in the soil to grow roots is called tip layering. Here is a diagram showing the tip layering. In this layering, the tip of plant is bent and buried in the soil to grow roots. The tip develops roots within 3 to 4 months. Then the plant is separated from the parent plant and cultivated. It is applied in raspberry and blackberry. Next is mold or stool layering. Here is a diagram showing the mold or stool layering. It is used to produce new plants from plants with heavy stems, closely branch shrubs, and root stalks of tree fruits. In this layering, the selected plant is caught at the height of 5 to 10 cm from the ground. Then the plant produces many branches, as shown in the figure. When these branches grow, to a certain height, about 20 to 25 centimeter, stem is covered with the soil or sawdust up to the height of 10 to 15 centimeter and water regularly. These branches develop roots within three to four months. Then these plants are separated from the parents' plants. By this process. Mango, guava, peach, plum, etc. can be propagated. Next is air layering. So here is a diagram showing air layering. Air layering is a type of artificial vegetative propagation in which the branch of a tree is cut and buried into the soil to grow a new plant. It is the most popular method of artificial vegetative propagation. In ear layering, the bark of the stem of about two ear ears is removed in the shape as a ring. Then the portion of the stem is covered with moist soil or cloth. We can give IBA hormone to enhance the growth of roots in the stem. The portion of stem can also be covered with moss and plastic to make it airproof. The covered portion develops root within one to two months. After that, the branch is removed from the tree and sown in the ground for further germination. It is applied in mango, apple, pear, etc. Grafting. The process of getting the new plants by combining root system of one plant on the root system of closely related plant is called grafting. Grafting is the method of joining the parts of two separate plants so that they will unite and continue to grow as a single plant. With such a quick method of uniform propagation, plants with similar characteristics and disease resistance in root stalks have advantages of grafting. The CN and stock of two compatible plants are joined in this method. The CN is part of union to be attached to the root stock, root stock that forms the bearing parts and the shoe system. The stock is the part of the union which contains the root portion of the union that forms the lower trunk and root system of the tree. The plant whose root system is taken for grafting is called seon and the plant whose root system is taken is called stock. Here we can see in diagram as well. Now we are going to discuss types of grafting, whip grafting, tongue grafting, cleft grafting and saddle grafting. So one by one, we are going to discuss about the types of grafting. Whip grafting. Here is a diagram showing the whip grafting. The whip graft 
is useful for plants that unite easily. This method is useful for apples, mangoes, and pear. It can be used to graph the root, stem, or the top graft. In whip grafting, the CN and e stock of closely related plants are cut obliquely. The length of the cut portion should be 3 to 5 cm. The both e stock and CN are combined together and sealed with a tape. After 3 to 4 months, both the e stem combined together. This method is done before the spring season. It is a simple and very common method of grafting which is commonly done in commercial fruits like apple, mango, peach, plum, lemon, etc. Next one is tongue grafting. So here is a diagram showing the tongue grafting. In this method, a tongue like deep structure about 3 to 5 cm is cut into C1 and E stock. Then they are joined together. The joint is sealed with a tape or plastic until they combine firmly. If they remain undisturbed and airtight, both the C1 and E stock combine within 2 to 3 months. Next one is cleft grafting. Here is a diagram showing the cleft grafting. In this grafting, the stock is cut and split down the middle, making a cleft about 5 to 8 cm on deep. The end of sion should be cut slanted in the shape of waves and inserted into the cleft. The portion is sealed with a tape, making airtight. The stock and sion are left on this stuff for 2 to 3 months. It is generally done in spring season. And finally here it comes the saddle grafting. So here is a diagram showing the saddle grafting. In this method, the stock is cut in the shape of a wedge. The sion is also cut carefully creating an inward inverted V-shaped slot that exactly fits the stock wedge tightly tightly in it. The sion and the stock are joined using grafting wax and wrapped airtight by grafting tape or plastic. Cutting. So here is a simple diagram showing the cutting in a plant. It is common method of vegetative propagation in which new plants are grown by planting a cut piece of stem or root of plants during favorable condition. The cutting piece must contain nodes and internodes for the growth of new plants. Oranges, sugarcane, rose, potato, etc. are propagated by stem cutting. Now we are going to discuss about the tissue culture. The scientific method of propagation of new plants from the cell, tissue or organ of a parent plant keeping them in a culture solution is called tissue culture. It is the method of producing a number of plants in a culture medium under sterile condition by using small pieces of plant tissue. It is also known as micropropagation. Mass production of plants with no seeds or non viable seeds, production of identical plants with common features of size, color, quality, etc., production of disease free plants, and production of mature plants in a short time are the major reason for the widespread development of tissue culture. So, here is a diagram showing the steps of tissue culture. In lab, an artificial medium is prepared for the tissue culture which is called culture solution. The culture solution consists of nutrients and plant hormones. In this method, a small lump of tissue is taken and kept in the culture solution under sterile condition. This lump is called callus. When the callus gets nutrients and hormones, it grows and develops roots and shoots. 
When the callus develops root and shoots, it is cut into several tiny plantlets. The plantlets with roots and shoots are kept in greenhouse for growth and then planted into the soil. In this way, new plantlets are propagated by tissue culture. Advantages of tissue culture A large number of plants can be produced by culture of meristem, stem, etc. Individual plants can be conserved. A large number of sterilized hybrids can be produced by this method. Disadvantages of tissue culture It cannot be applied in all cases. It is not, applica it is not easily as applicable in remote agricultural areas. Note Parthenogenesis is another type of asexual reproduction in which new organism is developed from unfertilized eggs. So here is one question from the heading tissue culture that is what is callus right is use? Callus is the mass of highly vacuolated, unorganized and undifferentiated cells. It is used to produce the number of plants at the time. Next question. A mango plant grown by grafting is better than that from seed Y. A mango plant grown by grafting is better than from seed because in grafting the stem of the mango of superior quality is grafted on the stem of local mango. Next question. Grafting is the best method of vegetative propagation in the context of Nepal. Why? Grafting is the best method of asexual. Uh, grafting is the best method of asexual uh, method of vegetative propagation in context of Nepal due to following reasons. It is cheaper, easier, and faster method. In it, highly skilled manpower is not required. What is IBA hormone? Uh, what is the full form of IBA? The rooting hormone which is used to encourage the growth of roots is called IBA hormone. The full form of IBA is indole 3 butyric acid. Next question. What is meant by conjugation? Name any three organisms reproduced by this method. The simplest method of reproduction in which two isogametes are formed in two different cells of the organism is called conjugation. Plants like Ramonas, Spirogyra, etc. are animals and animals like Paramecium reproduce by this method. Next question, what are isogametes? Those gametes which do not differentiate into male and female by structure but work as Opposite sex cells are called isogametes. What is isogamy? The fusion of two opposite isogametes to form a zygote is called isogamy. Next question. Meiosis plays a very important role in making the number of chromosomes diploid of spring. Why? In sexual reproduction, fertilization takes place in which two haploid gametes fuse for the formation of a zygote which is diploid. The gametes are formed by meiosis cell division in which the number of chromosomes is reduced half. So meiosis plays a very important role in making the number of chromosomes diploid in offspring. By this we have completed notes of this unit vegetative propagation in plant. I hope this video was useful to you. If you like this video please share with your friend and don't forget to subscribe if you have any queries don't forget to drop your comments in comment section see you on next video thank you